Hey guys, this is Paul from Halftone, and today I'm going to show you how to make a custom mobile nav inside a Webflow. I'm just going to kind of show you the whole thing I'm talking about here is. So first of all, I have this kind of fake project mocked up here, and you know, the nav bar inside of Webflow, this little built-in element. Super great, works super well, has this, you know, logo on the left and a set of links on the right. And then at a certain point you hit that that those mobile sizes and you get this hamburger menu which uses those same set of links stacking them vertically by default and, and you can change the color of these things and you know some of the easing and the speed but and what i really like to do and especially for bigger navs and and you know sites that really have a, a fair amount of personality to them i'm trying to inject a lot more style and flavor into them and, and something that will speak to the site overall because so you can see here this is kind of what our our goal for our kind of ending product will be where you know it's kind of the demo i made before where we switch to this more manually built navigation or hamburger icon and you click this and we really get this full screen takeover. We get to get that gradient in the background to bring in more of that branding. And you can see really what, what I'm really gonna focus on is kind of this transition from, from closed to open and back again, and really focusing on some of the animation pieces, this switch to a, to a close icon particularly, and then you know how you can start to make things fade in and out. So to start here, I just have my, my fake little Verge article mocked up here. Um, and I've started out by building out the nav on desktop. And then here on uh, when we hit the horizontal phone mobile landscape, you can see we switch from this desktop nav wrapper and mobile nav wrapper are those two separate pieces. And then we hit here they kind of switch visibility. So the desktop nav turns off or switches to display none, and the mobile nav is turned on or set to, to display block. We switch those in and out, that's real important. And then the next piece here is I have a, a real tiny interaction um, with this mobile overlay. So it's set to display none by default, and it's also set to position absolute, and then it's got this full one. And it's set to Z index of a thousand, which will make it open on top of pretty much everything. And I'll show you how to get this mobile nav interaction to work as well on that. So we got this position absolute, and you can see if I turn this on, it will take over the whole screen. It will fill everything. You can still scroll, it's, you know, it still kind of takes up that whole screen, but you can see we're showing our nav and, and hiding our nav. Um, with a real simple interaction. So in here, I have this mobile link block, which contains these three hamburger menu pieces, the three divs, the top, the middle, and the bottom uh, icon. They're 40 pixels wide, two pixels tall, and then the top and the middle have some margin added to them to make them spaced out from the, from the middle uh, a line in there. So real simple, real, um, real easy, and then inside this mobile overlay, we just have, um, you know, this set of links, same set of links inside of our desktop nav. Um, these these five links here. Um, that's kind of the one main downfall to this is that you kind of have to manage those set of links separately. They don't automatically, you know, switch from one to the other like it does with the uh, kind of standard nav inside of Webflow. You just kind of manage it in one place and it, it works in both places. Um, this is a little bit different than that, but you know, most navs, uh, you know, your nav shouldn't be overly complicated anyway. Uh, so ideally this should work and it'd be pretty manageable um, because you know, most navigations on, on sites aren't changing drastically very often anyway. So we have a real simple uh, interaction set up on top of our mobile link, which right now just hides and shows this mobile overlay uh, div on that and then the other piece there you can see this icon this this menu icon is staying on top of everything that's kind of the second part of this positioning you want to take that mobile link you want to set it to relative so it starts to get a z index option um, anything outside of static gets that uh, starts to get that z index option and then i set it to 2000 it basically anything 
higher than the mobile overlay. You can see that's 1,000. This is set to 2,000. Basically, any number above 1,000 will will do the same trick. It's all kind of that layers and, and numbering. And, and this is set up so we can basically start, click this, and it's triggering this hiding and showing, but we can also just add some animation and some movement to this upon those clicks. So with our mobile link layer, uh, not layer, but div selected, um, we can go into our interactions. We have this mouse click set up. We have show mobile overlay on first click and on second click hide mobile overlay. So show mobile overlay, the initial state is just selecting that mobile overlay div and setting it to display none. And then, uh, you know, the kind of first action with it is to just set it to display block. Real simple, just hide and show. So our next step here will to be to animate these lines here, the, the hamburger menu essentially. So we're gonna take this middle one, we want that to just go away completely and turn into, you know, go from opacity 100 to opacity zero. And then these top and bottom ones to come down and meet in the middle and then rotate 45 degrees. So they kind of turn into an X like, like I showed earlier. So if we just take the middle one and we can do uh, opacity, we can click this set to initial state and we want it to be 100 by default. And then if we click again on opacity and add another one, you can see it starts to, um, we wanna have this happen after this hide and show and the opacity uh, can be cranked down to zero. So that's kind of our initial, um, initial piece there but that's only one one piece of the puzzle and then we want to start this process with the top one and we will uh, do transition move initial state we're just gonna be moving it up and down so with the y and we can set it to the initial state of zero and that will be kind of what it's set at right now and then if we add another transform we bring this down into the uh, with the opacity we want all this to kind of happen uh, a little bit together and we can have this come down so you can start to move it um, I think around 10 pixels feels you know pretty decent and, and, and seemed good um, from my initial testing then the next step is we want to add that rotate on top of this so initial state we're going to use the Z kind of you know roundabout uh, uh, rotation and the initial state wants to be zero and then the next step is to add that simply add that 45 degrees to it if you can see we're starting to build this thing so if we preview this it kind of starts to happen and um, all starts to kind of happen together and and we're starting to build at least half of it anyway so basically now we just want to repeat this whole process with the bottom hamburger menu icon. So move, and we're basically going to flip um, our numbers around to be the negative values of what we just did. So we're starting out move, we want it to be zero for the Y, and then for our actual action, we can move it negative 10 pixels. And again, I'm just going to add this to this little pile down here of all this stuff kind of moving together. And then we will repeat that same process with rotation, uh, zero degrees as our initial state. And then we will go once more, rotation, and then negative 45 degrees. And again, plopping it all inside this little thing here. So you can see up here, we got, we got an X kind of going here. And we got this this transition into from that hamburger menu the middle one goes away the other two you know switch over to this to this x and since it's all built within this kind of setup that we did before it's really got this nice you know we can basically do anything we really want to this animation um, and it's not really going to mess with anything it's just going to change how it looks but it's still going to open and close that menu and we're still going to get any of this so we can basically select these the all these actions i have highlighted here um, I like to have them all kind of happen together. That's just kind of my preference. And then I'll make it happen in 0.3 seconds. And then let's change the easing. Something like in-out quad, something a little bit snappier, a little bit cleaner. And here, if we go into preview mode and just run through this, 
you can see that boom we got a nice little x happening there um we can see that it, it, it switches pretty pretty quickly and feels pretty snappy to me um and and feels pretty nice you can see if we click it again we'll close the menu but we haven't set up that second click we haven't added all those other pieces to this yet so we still are just just hiding the mobile overlay so if we basically just want to go in here and set everything back to everything that we changed on the other one we basically just want to go back and, and set it all to that default state so hamburger top we did move and rotate so move and we can do our y back to zero we can then add a rotate on top of this it's basically all going to go back to zero um, and it's going to be pretty easy to set up this second piece you just kind of kind of remember everything you were doing um, before so if we do opacity for our middle icon um, middle line um, that was just at 100 pretty default pretty easy uh, and then the bottom one we go move we want to go that y to zero and then we want to add our rotation with our Z index rotation, not Z index, but Z uh, space. I mean, we can pile again, all these in here together. Um, it's kind of harder to preview this um, inside of here since it's all just kind of trying to, to do exactly what it's showing on the screen. So then we can do that. That's all under the second click hide mobile overlay. So then we can go back into preview mode. We can click into here, boom. And then here, and that's okay. So. We want to change our easing and make that at least the same. Um, I personally like it a little faster on close since, you know, when you're closing it, I just kind of don't really, I don't really care about it anymore. I'm just trying to close the menu and, and get on with my life. Um, so we can go here and boom, happening super quick, super smooth. And we got our menu transition happening. I'm just going to add one more little piece of player if you will to this so you notice in in our um little preview here the the x is animating real nicely um but the, the real good thing about this is you know say you had some other fading animations in in other parts of your website or, or things kind of showing on scroll or, or things like that um you can really inject all that kind of same idea into this menu uh with with the same kind of concepts so with the same concept as we did with the with the uh the mobile uh, menu so we have this overlay uh, mobile overlay background which is that gradient background and i just want that to fade in basically the same way as we did the hamburger menu so if we select this one more time and we do opacity 100 maybe let's do the same point three and then we do in our quad and let's have it happen right after that hide and show so you can see that that really starts to, to kind of um i'm gonna do the same thing with the with the links wrapper as well actually so if we go here set the initial state to zero or the initial opacity to zero and then we go opacity 100. Let's make this 0 0.3 in our quad. And you can really like kind of set the timing for all these things. So you can either kind of stack them together so they happen um, in line with each other, or they can kind of happen, you know, all after each other when they're a little bit separated out like this. So you can see that it's, that's feeling pretty nice. It's a nice little delay on you know showing that maybe there's a different way to stack stuff um maybe it wants to go you know maybe all of this wants to happen together what does that feel like that's kind of nice i like that so we'll go here and we'll click that and it kind of has a slight delay to the animation you know you can swap things around inside that animations palette and uh and really make things happen and i like how it all kind of closes together feels pretty nice um, nice and snappy and there's really a lot of uh, things to do here so if i go ahead and publish this publish it for the first time so we can kind of preview it out here on this other tab and in the real world as, as i like to call it 
Um, you can see we're switching down to the mobile nav. Everything's happening just as we previewed. But one thing that just kind of I, I like to do to these things or it really adds a nice bit of polish on top is to, to make it, you know, you can see we're, we're able to scroll away from that and we kind of lose it and it's a little bit, you know, that's not super great. We don't want our users to be able to, you know, scroll away from the menu. It'd be nice if it just kind of popped on top and we were kind of locked in there. Um, so that's going to kind of be my goal here. So I have a little bit of code that I want to add to this, a little bit of of JavaScript that we'll add before the body tag. Um, so here, I'll leave this on the screen for a second so you can kind of check it out. It's just got this, um, you know, I can't even remember where I found this, somewhere in the in the web flow depths of the, uh, of the forum. But basically what we're doing is, so in here, we have our, this mobile link div. So you can see here, um, basically it's all kind of centers around this chunk here. You basically got to swap this out for whatever you're naming your, your, um, your div or your, your link in, inside your project. And this will basically say when you click it, it will turn, uh, overflow to hidden and it will be kind of auto by default. So auto or overflow, uh, will allow you to scroll because there is space, you know, this page is bigger than the screen that we're looking at it through. So there's overflow, um, but it will set it to hidden um, upon that click and then turn it off on the second click, basically. So you can see in here, like inside of um, Webflow, we have mobile link and, and inside Webflow, you're able to kind of add spaces and, and add uppercase and lowercase letters and things. Um, but once it takes it and it publishes it, gets rid of those spaces because you can't really have spaces in class names and CSS and it adds them with a dash and it makes everything lowercase for you. So that's what you have to do when you write this code is kind of go check out your published thing, make sure you're matching that class name exactly as it is out here, just because we can't preview these kind of custom code things inside of Webflow, you have to kind of publish and then test stuff out and then see kind of what happens from there. So we want to plop this before the body tag, a nice script in here. We'll hit save, we'll hit publish, and hopefully it'll all work on first go here. So if I hit refresh, you can see I can scroll up and down, I can click our menu open, and you can see I can't scroll anymore. The scroll bar goes away, I'm trying to click and drag up and down, I can't do it. I hit this and I can scroll again. So that really just locks you in and, and gives you just that much of a nicer experience. It feels like a real nice polished mobile experience and uh, feels nice and good. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the main situation here. It's real easy, you know, not too hard. Once you kind of get the hang of, you have a nice handle on interactions inside of Webflow and you kind of understand you know how you kind of make things move and how you make things happen before and after each other uh you can really do kind of whatever you want you can see we got we got a pretty complex thing going on here but it's really you know only a couple things moving around and hiding and showing um it's really about switching opacity on and off and and getting your kind of easing and things you know on top of each other and below each other um, which really makes all the difference. You can easily take stuff and just order it around and check out the way things happen. Yeah, so we'll put that code snippet for sure inside of the video description or inside the blog post for this for this video. And uh, we will, um, yeah, maybe even share out this file if, if that's something we can do. Uh, anyway, thank you. Have a nice day and uh, have fun uh, digging around in Webflow.